Hello there. Happy lunchtime on a Friday. I just had my lunch. <laughs> my name is Julie Hirschberg. I am a neurologic physical therapist, the owner and founder of Reactive Therapy and Wellness here in the Los Angeles area. Hey, Chelsea, joining me at lunchtime. Um, I come join you all every um, week to chat a little bit about what we're learning and what we've been reading and doing here at Reactive. And uh, if you know me, you know I love to just kind of stay up to date on the latest research. And um, there were a couple of things that came out this week. I, I wish I could just talk about all of them, but I wanted to talk about one. Let me bring it up here. And this was a research letter, so a very short account of some research findings. This was in the journal Psychiatry and Clinical Neuroscience. And um, this one caught my eye because it it resonated with something that I feel we've been seeing in the clinic. We got Chelsea here. She's our FMD program director. We certainly have said like, wow, this has really increased since the pandemic. Um, but this was the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the incidence of patients with functional neurologic disorders seen in a neurologic emergency department. And this was um, done in Mexico. Um, let me see. The, um, I have our dog wanting to join us, of course. Come on in. Um, he'll probably want to leave in like two seconds as well. Um, and I want to say the group is from um, the Department of Psychiatry. Um, at, at this hospital in uh, Mexico. So this is not in the US, um, but I think this is really, really interesting. And let me show you first um, the, the graph that they found. So here, here it is. So they were purely looking at the incidence of um, people coming in and then getting diagnosed with a functional neurologic disorder in the ER over the course of the pandemic. And I know this is kind of small, but I'll, I gotta look at it here even just to be able to, to read it. What, what you can see is years across the bottom, all the way from 2018, so pre-pandemic, 2019, 2020, 2021. And then at the end, these last two graphs are comparing pre-pandemic excuse me, and pandemic. And basically what you can see is um, over the course of the pandemic, there was a threefold increase in um, people with functional neurologic disorders in, in the ER. Now, uh, what I would really like to see is let's look at this next to other data, right? What else went up during the pandemic, right, in the ER? Uh, what was the incidence of stroke, um, Parkinson's, MS? I would imagine, and the authors actually stayed in here, generally speaking, the incidence of some of these disorders absolutely went up. We know that also because of the pandemic, uh, ER visits generally went down unless they were for something really serious. And a functional neurologic disorder, very serious. Uh, particularly, one of the things that they found in this study was the most um, common presentation that was presenting to the ER were seizures. And so absolutely, um, without a diagnosis of a seizure disorder or functional neurologic disorder, if this is occurring, and you don't know what it is, you're going to present to the ER even during a pandemic. And so that was the most common, well, I, I wrote down a couple other details here. There were um, the, so seizures were the most common. Um, then that was followed by weakness um, or paralysis. Um, and more, almost half of the patients could identify a specific stressor as a, one of the precursors to um, the onset of their functional neurologic disorder symptoms. So, um, so again, in summary, what they found is a three times incidence of functional neurologic disorders during the pandemic. Now, one thing that I would say, um, and they don't say this, it's a very short research uh, letter that was published. They don't say this, but 
I also would argue that over the last couple of years, the uh, recognition of functional neurologic disorder has gone up. So there may actually be some people that were sitting out in 2018, 2017, and and before the pandemic that had functional neurologic disorder and it wasn't recognized in the ER. So I also think kudos to recognition in the ER of functional neurologic disorder. That certainly, for many of my uh, patients, if it had been recognized in the ER and they had gotten the referral, the diagnosis and the care they need from the onset, oh my gosh, so much would have been saved. So much medical trauma, so much time, so much expenses um, saved. But there's a few things I really want to point out here, and I'm going to go back. So let me share this. I've shared this before, but I want to put in this article in the context of how might this happen? How might a functional neurologic disorder happen? And this is a, a proposed model based on some of the neuroscience and the literature of of how this can occur. And I wanna put this in the framework of why might being in the midst of a pandemic uh, be a contributing factor, not the factor, like the pandemic isn't didn't just cause a functional neurologic disorder, but be one of the accumulating um, events. And I think there could be various reasons that happen here. We've definitely seen um, uh, immune responses being an issue um, in the pandemic due to COVID. So due to somebody actually getting the infection or the the vaccination, right? So um, that could certainly be in that blue box, you have this initial event or accumulation of predisposing factors. Being in a worldwide pandemic, and not only that, but socially isolated, not even for many people, allowed to go out of the house, um, allowed to go to school if that's, if you're of school age, um, allowed to be around other people and your loved ones. This would be a huge initial event or accumulation of events. And not only that, so that's, that's the, that's the blue box here. Not only that, it would be a factor that would be a negative neuroplasticity factor. Being in a pandemic and socially isolated is not promoting positive neuroplasticity ever really ever. So this, so that you could have um, the hand injury, the broken leg, um, a traumatic loss of a loved one. You could have any, any type of event and layer on a pandemic and the social isolation, particularly, um, and fear and anxiety uh, that we've all been feeling, layer that on, that is definitely a negative neuroplasticity factor. So I wanna zoom in a little bit here. I know I've shared this before, um, this kind of being part one of this model of why this might occur, this initial event or accumulation of, of events, and part two being an adaptation to the event. So that's kind of zooming in here on this orange part. And there's positive neuroplasticity factors and negative neuroplasticity factors that can really contribute to how we adapt to that initial event. Maybe it was a concussion. Uh, maybe it was a broken bone. Like I always like to point out, oh, where did he go? Oh, it's over here um, because I point this out all the time. Good old Oliver Sacks, right? What if Oliver Sacks had had his really traumatic knee injury during a pandemic and um, wasn't able to see his loved ones, right? So that also would have contributed to his functional neurologic disorder. So that would be a lifestyle factor, social isolation, right? Um, a psychosocial or environmental factor that would cause a maladaptation to the injury or events or accumulation of events. Now, here's the good news. Uh, let's go here. So if we zoom in here at the end of this diagram, um, that the good news is that if a functional neurologic disorder occurred, whether it was before the pandemic or after the pandemic or was influenced by the pandemic as many, many, and, and in fact, I would say 
all neurologic disorders. All humans were influenced by the pandemic, without a doubt. But it reactive, it's not just functional neurologic disorders where we might have seen a flare of symptoms or onset. We, we've seen this in stroke. We've seen it in MS, in Parkinson's disease, in peripheral neuropathies. It doesn't really matter. And all neurologic disorders were influenced by this negative neuroplasticity factor of the pandemic. The good news is that that maladaptive, that negative neuroplastic change that occurred can be recovered and restored and reconnected. And so I'll go back here to, um, to, to where we started, which was this article that just came out um, last week, I believe. Um, the <clears throat> COVID-19 and the pandemic absolutely um, we see a correlation with an increase in functional neurologic disorder. This doesn't mean the pandemic caused it. This doesn't mean that functional neurologic disorders are just str stress or anxiety or in a person's head because they've been socially isolated. It just means that the pandemic influenced what was happening neurologically already for the person. It's a factor, it's an environmental factor, and it's really important to consider that in the, the, the whole model of us understanding functional neurologic disorders. So I do think that's really important. One person could read this article and go, oh, well, stress, stress causes FND. It's in it's in your head. It's purely a stress related condition. Nope, you, that person would be remiss if they also saw studies where people with Parkinson's their symptoms really um, got worse during the pandemic. Oh well, Parkinson's is a stress related disease. No, it's not, and neither is MS, and neither is stroke, and neither is functional neurologic disorder. Not purely, but we do know that environmental lifestyle psychosocial factors influence these neurologic diseases, not just functional neurologic disorders, but all of them. They It influences, it's a factor. And um, potentially during the pandemic, as shown in this study, it actually led to more people having functional seizures or functional paralysis and presenting to, to the ER as one of many factors. So that's the take home for me. I find this really interesting. We have certainly a reactive seen a, a much higher increase. And I'd love to hear from other healthcare professionals too, a much higher increase of um, functional neurologic disorders and just worsening of neurologic disorders in general in the pandemic. And so thankful that we have been able to, um, we did have to close for a while during the pandemic, but we've been able to stay uh, generally open, seeing people people on telehealth and helping people kind of get get back to that pre-pandemic level where their the the their neurologic system was really really impacted by the pandemic and I'm so thankful to be a part of a team that um, is able to help people do that so um, that's that's what's new this week here I'll, I'll stop sharing um, I will um, share all the articles, these videos, the resources in our newsletter, I, I share these every week. So you can go, if you're a healthcare provider, reactiveeducation.com. If you're a person with a neurologic disorder, grab us at reactivept.com. Join our newsletter. I'll send out a summary. I'll send out the article um, from this week as well. And if you have been, uh, let me see if I could grab this as well. Um, if you've been following us, Brittany and I have been sharing a bunch because we just, Brittany put together a great, oh, I'm looking for it. Where'd it go, Brittany? Um, a really great resource. I thought I had a picture of it. Sorry, I guess I don't. But a great resource for for folks that maybe don't understand F&D as well. And it's called 10 Things to Avoid 
doing with people with FND and especially for ortho PT. So this was um, this was a really great idea from Brittany's standpoint to make a one page easily accessible. Just avoid these things because some of these things can make functional neurologic disorders worse. So you can grab that download too and join our newsletter at reactiveeducation.com. If you're a person with FND, this resource might be helpful for you if you are um if you um are working with somebody an ortho pt maybe that is not an fnd specialist um and great comment here um just kind of going back to increased incidence and worsening of symptoms um laura dpt said uh that they agreed i also recognize the pandemic factor influencing really all patients yes all patients it really affected people um especially those with functional neurologic disorder symptoms and you know what it's that's not surprising right given what we understand about the pathophysiology of functional neurologic disorders and particularly that um, parts of the brain that are affected in functional neurologic disorder have to do with self-agency and control I mean, hello, I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, my sense of control of anything just totally went out the door. My sense of agency that 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 I could make decisions to influence my own life, that I was in control of those, also went down because we were in a pandemic. We didn't know what I I think very clearly back to the beginning of this because a big thing is that I had to close my business and didn't know if it was going to survive, right? So I can remember how high my anxiety was. I can remember, I mean, for for me, I get a lot of muscle tension when when I'm really anxious and stressed and that causes numbness and tingling down my arm. And um, I, I can just remember my whole body just feeling terrible, uh, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic. And when things were so shut down, we couldn't go to the gym. We couldn't see people. We couldn't eat, like, I, I shouldn't complain being near the beach, but we couldn't go to the beach, which is like such a restoring grounding um, place for for me and for my family. So, um, so there were so many things that we know are directly correlated, autonomic, lifestyle, sensory, directly correlated to functional neurologic disorder um, and those symptoms. And the fact that the, our, we, were, we were really kind of dysregulated during the pandemic because things were so shut down, um, it, it makes sense that we would see increase in symptoms. So thank you for that comment. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining me for your interest in the latest research, the latest evidence, what what is happening in the world of neurology. I really appreciate our community so, so much. And again, if you want to join our newsletter, you can join it at reactiveeducation.com or reactive uh, PT. And um, oh, Nikia, we should touch base. Um, so um, Nikia has a comment in here too. Um, you know, it can be really hard to get a proper diagnosis and not everybody understands the the spectrum of a functional neurologic disorders. Is it tardive dyskinesia? Is it tardive dystonia? Is it dystonia? What is it? Not everybody understands that. It really does take a movement disorder specialist and um we're going to see if we can help you get to a movement disorder specialist as well um, to, to help answer those questions too. So thanks for reaching out about that, Nikia, and we will be in touch. Um, thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I hope you have a really wonderful Friday, a great weekend, and I will see you next week.